Hey, what's up? It's me, DeVecchio. It's your girl, Queen. You already know what time it is. This is another episode of what? We, it's always a talk to us. It's the Stu, uh, the Stu Takeover on the DeVecchio Live Show. And um, we're in the hometown of Queen in Orlando, Florida today. Actually, we got it's not a, my hometown, well, but... Um, her, her home of Orlando. Because where are you from? I'm from New York, Brooklyn. Hey. What is it? No, that's no, Atlanta. What's that, New York? Y'all got a hand sign? No, we don't. No, anywho, today on today's <laughs> show, we're going to be talking about uh, commuting and living in base. I am a commuter. I once lived in base. Queen here lives in base. She's yep. also once a commuter. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, we got a, a lot to talk about with that. So stick around. We'll be back with more of the Stu, take, the Stu Takeover on the all-new The Back Heel Live yeah. Show. Yeah. So before we start taping, you guys know last week Queen um, put me on this healthy, uh, these healthy smoothies, yeah. two of them to be exact. So if you have, if you missed that, check that out. Um, and this week we still left her in the kitchen, and she made me okay. some cauliflower fried rice. Cauliflower fried rice. Put in some soy sauce, eggs, onions, carrots, the cauliflower. I can't. That that is like a tongue twister in itself. <laughs> so. Um, I mean, the crazy, it smells just like Chinese fried rice, which is... It does. Let me get, that's too much for the smell. Let's try it. First time I ever tried it. After you. Let me know what you think. You go ahead. What I have to deal with. It smells good, though. That's a big spoonful. It tastes really good. It's, um, the texture's unique. Mm -hmm. It's eggs in here, too. I love eggs. No, this isn't bad. It tastes just like um, regular fried rice. It does. Yeah. Mm. That's not bad. Let's get into the stew takeover. Hey, what's up? It's me, DeVecchio. This is the stew takeover. And I'm here with the one and only queen. Yeah, what's up, y'all? So, last month, for the stew takeover, we just talked about the basics as to like what made us want to get into flying, um, just good, bad, and ugly, you know, so on and so on. Um, and this week, we told you guys that we were going to specifically speak on um, commuting and living in base, the pros and cons of that. Um, just speaking for myself, as of today, I am I consider myself a professional pro professional professional commuter. Um, I've been commuting pretty much my entire time as a flight attendant, with the exception of one year, um, where I actually wow. lived in base, which was Las Vegas, oh, um, yeah. and that was, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that in a second. And you, on the other hand, you actually live here in Orlando. I do. So I'm based here in Orlando, and I also live here. Um, I did spend a year and a half almost two years uh, commuting, and that was it. Now let's talk, a commuter is a person, for example, um, the airline that we work for, we have, I can't count bases, but it's Vegas, Los Angeles, Oakland, Dallas, Houston, Orlando, Austin. Fort Lauderdale, Austin, Baltimore. San no, San Antonio? No, not no, yet. Not yet. Not yet. Uh, Chicago, but if you don't live in one of those bases, uh, like me, I'm based in Houston. I live in Atlanta, so in order for me to get to work, to start, and end my trips, I have to get to Houston first, mm -hmm. which means I have to drive to the airport in Atlanta, find a flight, fly to Houston, possibly wait around for some time, mm -hmm. uh, depending on what time the trip started, depends on the time of the flight, and then finally I start working then. That whole time when I'm commuting, I don't get paid for it at all. But on the other hand, if you live in base. Yeah, so once you live in base, you start your trip at home. So I just drive to the airport and I begin my trip. And I end 
in base as well. So So every time she lands at the end of her three day trip, uh -huh. she's getting her car to drive home. When I land in Houston, I am either staying overnight depending on what time that flight gets in, or I have to um, drive or not drive. I have to run through the airport to find another flight to get back to Atlanta to finally get in my car to drive home. And sometimes you might not you may not find a direct flight. You might have to <sighs> find a connecting <sighs> flight or hop on two different airlines just to get yeah. to you know to your domicile. So, and I do want to talk about um, one of my worst commuting experiences real quick. And this just happened last December. Um, I flew a trip, and it was a trip out of Austin. Um, it was a Christmas trip. I left out on Christmas Eve. I uh, flew to Austin, no problem. Uh -huh. uh, but what got me was the hotel. I don't know if I told you this, but I oh. booked... Okay, I am big on, like, Hotwire, Priceline, just the... Um, where you get a discounted room, but you don't know which room it is until after you pay Not for you. it. Mm -hmm. So I, I like it a lot because for one, the rooms are always like very inexpensive. They'll show you three or four hotels that you could choose from. Whatever. The three hotels that they told me that I could choose from were Holiday Inn Express, Hampton Inn, and Comfort Inn and Suites. Which all three of those I go through, I'm, I'm big on reviews, like recent reviews, and they had decent reviews. Mm -hmm. um, so when I went through, I paid for it, I got an email and it said, Congratulations, you're staying at the Super 8. Um, it's no refund once you book it. I like, I was mad, but it was so late. Mm -hmm. um, at this time, it was maybe like 11 o'clock at night, and I had to be back at the airport at 7 the next morning. So again, because I don't live in base, I had to fly in the night before in order to make it there on time. So I went to this hotel, probably one of the worst um, that I've stayed in in a while. Uh, the person who was working the front desk was also the shuttle driver. Who was also security. So it was, you know, one man. I mean, granted, they got to do what they got to do. But when I got to the room, um, I made sure that my luggage went inside of the tub. Right. Because I'm real big on, like, bed bugs and just bugs in general. And a lot of people don't know bed bugs actually can't get inside of the tubs oh, in the bathroom. Yeah. Um, so I had my own commuter blanket that I use on the planes. And I, like, used that to cover myself up with. Um, I just laid it out. I didn't have anything to cover me up with, mm -hmm. so I kind of laid on that on top of their cover, and my commuter blanket is still there because I didn't want it to get back into. Um, however, uh, Priceline did admit that they made a mistake, and so they ended up refunding me back you? my okay. money. So that was good. Um, anywho, I worked the trip. Christmas Day, I was in Washington, D.C. Everything was smooth. This was an amazing trip. I flew with a lot of um, senior people who've been here like 20, 30 years. So that was great. I get to Austin at the end of the three days. Um, and I see a flight that's leaving five minutes after we landed. And I came from an international destination. Mm -hmm. So I had to run through customs, get back through security, just to run to the gate and see the plane that I want being pushed back. <gasps> Which was a direct to um, direct to Atlanta, which that hurt big time. So I see the plane. So then I run down, and I, at this point, I'm having to make a decision: Do I try for another flight that's direct to Atlanta, or do I go through Dallas and connect there and get to Atlanta super late? Right. So I said, "Okay, I'm gonna try for the direct." I go up. They're like, "This flight is full. Great." Uh, you hear that a lot, but even after they say the flight is full. You kind of just wait around because you may or may not get a seat. So I waited around. I didn't get a seat. But, of course, the Dallas fight left. So at this point, I only have one option, which everything at this point is like time, time, time. So there was a flight that left Austin at 9.15 uh, for me to land in Houston. No, left Austin for me to land in Dallas at 10, like, 25. Okay. And then the flight left Dallas at 10.55 to Atlanta. However, my uh, Dallas flight was super delayed. So I get on the plane and I'm like, hey, how long is it going to be? And they're like, oh, the flight's only 38 minutes. Great. So at this point, I get on. Um, the flight will then get me there at like 10.45, which gives me 10 minutes to get to from get. my gate to the next. Yeah. So at this point, I kind of gave up. I'm like, I'm going to have to stay in Dallas for the night. So I, um, I booked 
I was looking to book a hotel in Dallas because I'm just like, let me just go to set up right. shop there. And I was telling my mom, like, yeah, I'm going to just stay here tonight, you know, extra day in Dallas, whatever. So I land in Dallas and I'm like, okay, maybe I'll try the Atlanta flight. Mm -hmm. Ten minutes, it's a, another plane at our gate. So at this point, we're having to wait for this plane to finish boarding. Oh, so you really... Uh... Right. So I do that. We get to the gate. I get off the plane. And I see we came in as like gate nine. But at gate six is the Atlanta flight. And it said close. But some told me just go anyway. to the gate. Just go. So I ran to the gate. And I'm like, I went to the op station. And I asked him, I said, hey, is this flight full? He said, yeah, from the front to the back. And I'm like, well, does anybody have the jump seat? Which the jump seat is the extra flight that's in the seat on there. And he was like, no, it's wide open. And I was like, okay, here it is, 11.05, 10 minutes after the plane was supposed to go. I said, what are you waiting on? He was like, oh, bags. And I said, okay, well, how long do they have? I don't know, but as soon as they get done, this plane is being pushed back. So I, like, run over, I'm running, I'm looking back at him. It's a lady standing there complaining to the uh, customer service agent oh who was supposed to give me the seat. And I'm like, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God, I'm in full uniform. just want to be like, respectable to her. Me. I wanted to do that so bad. But luckily, the ops agent was like, hey, you got 30 seconds. And when she, he said that the customer service agent heard her, yeah, I or like, heard him, gave me my boarding pass, I ran over. Literally, the doors were closing as I was getting on. So I made it home all within the same night. But let me tell you, just when you, as a commuter, you have to create every scenario. Like You have to be like, okay, if I could get on this flight, if I get to here, yeah. then where can I go? But I was also looking to fly out to Vegas and catching a red-eye flight from Vegas uh -huh. To Atlanta, and like if I got stuck in Vegas, I mean it's Vegas. I can always find a cheap hotel, find some fun to do. Right. So that was probably out of my all my years of flying, that is probably one of the worst um, commuting experiences. Well, that that's turned out good, for the good though, because it could have been worse. It could have been a whole lot worse. It could have been a whole um, lot worse. Some other time, like for me, my worst experience. Um, I had a few, but. My worst experience was when I first started. Um, I was based out in Oakland, California, and I live in Orlando. Uh, far, far away. So literally, it would take me roughly about 10 hours of flying to get home. And you, people don't know, like when you commute from the West Coast, you lose a day. You lose a whole entire day. So literally, I would have a three-day trip. So before that three-day trip started, I had to commute the day before. So I spent 10 hours commuting. I got there, spent the night, spent money on a hotel, started my trip the next day, ended my trip. And sometimes if time permitted or if things worked out, I would try to get, you know, find a flight to get home. So literally I would end my trip, let's say at noon. Yeah. Get back to Oakland. Now I have to figure out, okay, what route or what flights I can catch to get me there. So I would never be able to fly just one airline all the way back home. And just say, hey, I'll get off this flight and, you know, take yeah. a connecting flight. No, 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 no. So I had to literally play chess. Sit there, figure out, okay, this flight on this airline can get me from Oakland to Phoenix. If I get to Phoenix, now I can run to another terminal or gate area, basically terminal, for another airline to then get on their plane to get home. And, and it's it's not like it's right next door. No, like you literally have to run. Literally, half the time. you can have um, one airline in Terminal A and the next one in Terminal B. One time, I had to yeah connect through Las Vegas. So I said, okay, I'm gonna take one airline, not Vegas, but L.A. Take one airline. Oh my god! Get to L.A. But while I was waiting for the jump seat to get to L.A. Really, no. This is how it happened. I wanted to go to Vegas and then take Vegas to Orlando, which would have been easy for me because Oakland to Vegas is like less than an hour. Right. Okay. I was waiting for the jump seat. Literally for over an hour and a half, probably two hours. I had the agent come and tell me, hey, oh, you can't have it because someone else already signed up. And I'm like, well. I've been standing here the whole time. Right. Like, what do you mean? And that's, those are first come, first serve. And I was like, what do you mean? Like, I've been here the whole entire time. She's like, well, this person is a regular. Excuse me, ma'am? So they weren't there. They're just They weren't friends. there. Oh. That, that's just her friend. And I was so pissed off. So oh, no, I would have fought that. Oh, my God. I really didn't have time to wait on, you know, like a supervisor or anyone else. Because 
my time was like yeah. crunching down. So I had to run to an American gate. And this was what airport? Oakland. Okay. So it's not too far. Yeah. But I had to run uh, to catch an American flight to go to L.A. So I got to L.A. And once I got to L.A., I said, okay, I can catch a red-eye flight. But I didn't know, like, in L.A., they were doing construction. So I got off one airline. I had to literally catch, go outside, catch a bus. Yeah. Like, catch a bus to go to the other terminal, to then go through security all over again, to then go <laughs> to my gate, got to the gate. The flight is delayed about five hours. So people don't, with L.A., LA, the terminals are not connected. I think they are now, like, under tunnels. Now, but before it wasn't. Like, and you literally had to go outside and then go through security all over It's again. the quickest way to get through what I realized. Not even the tunnels. Just to go right outside and walk. And walk, yeah. Because I did a test one day, and I wanted to get from Terminal uh, 1 to Terminal 6, which is literally right like a straight path. Mm -hmm. um, the bus took, like, 25 minutes because of traffic. And then I went over there, and I couldn't get on the... It really wasn't a test, but it ended up being a test because I couldn't get on the flight. But I ended up walking back. I got back in like 10 minutes. Keep in mind, it's a flight attendant plus three bags that are extremely heavy trying to maneuver through here. Yep. So um, we're going to take a quick break real quick. And when we come back, we're going to talk about living in base and some of the negative experiences that we had with <laughs> that. Because as a commuter, a lot of airlines, uh, the commuter is protected. So if something happens, like with my current airline, and I can't get on the flight, um, as long as I'm at the airport and I try, they'll kind of forgive me. They'll take away the trip without any penalty, and I have to go back in and I have to make the trip up. However, if I lived in base, I don't have that benefit. No, so that's don't. one thing that I have that Tiffany doesn't. But I do not. In base. So yeah. Boop boop. Not to toot my own horn, but I kind of got to make a little <laughs> bit more. I've been keeping lock right here. This is the Stu Takeover on the Benefit Your Life. Hey, you guys enjoyed what you've seen so far? Please check out the Stu Takeover on the DeVecchio Live Show. Make sure you subscribe. All right, welcome back. No, no, I'm just kidding. This is just a little commercial break real quick. Are you subscribing to this channel? If not, you need to go ahead and do so. Also, while you're subscribing, get on over there on all of your social media, Facebook, Instagram, everything is going to be at the DeVecchio Live Show. Get all the updates. You definitely don't want to miss out on anything that we're doing. You never know what we'll be. So go ahead, subscribe, like, share, tell all your friends right now. It's the DeVecchio Live Show. Let's get back into the action. All right, y'all, so we back. Let's do takeover, unscripted show. We just like let everything just roll off the dome. Here with Queen, I'm DeVecchio. Pick it up right where we left off. We're talking today all about commuting and living in base. We already told y'all about the whole commuting. It's not the best. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people look down on it. Uh, people that live in base, only because they don't understand that sometimes, you know, it's not up to me to not live in yeah. base. Um, but I gotta do what I gotta do to make my money. And it's very rare that I'm not able to get to where I need to go. It's just sometimes I realize that I can't just go from A to B. In order mm -hmm. for me to get to B, I got to go to A, to C, to D, to E, to finally get back um, to B. So that's that. But living in base is not all what it's cracked up to be either. I mean, okay, I can say this much. For me, when I was living out of base, you never wanted your time to be wasted, right? Because you're away from home. Right. So you want to make it useful and make it worthwhile. So I would work really, really hard. Um, cause I'm like, okay, I'm, you know, I'm not based at home. Let me just take advantage of the time that I am away. And I would pick up so many trips right. and, and do all that and probably take like, like we were talking about earlier, blocking. I would do a lot of blocking. Right, right, right. Which, when we say blocking, I mean, it's like combine all your days together. Yeah. So, so I would like, work like, uh, two weeks straight, two weeks straight and then have two weeks off. So whether it be at the beginning of the month or the end of the month or the first week, I block six days and then off the second week and then so on and so forth. So that's usually what commuters do yeah. for the most part. Um, 
so you make your time worthwhile. Now, being based at home. You'll get up and go do a quick little go into New York and come right back. I basically, turn. like, I will do a turn or nothing at all. Like, she prefers now turns because she can get out and um, she can be home. I can get back home at the end of the night. Me, like, on the other hand, I prefer spending trips. Like, keep me out. Like, as a commuter, I don't live in the base. It's, it's no need for me to spend time in Houston when I live in Atlanta because then I'm have, I'll spend money on hotels. Right, but the great advantage of being at home is that you get to be around your family, your friends. Have some kind of sense of normalcy. Because yeah. I will say, when you're a commuter, your work consume you almost. Let's not talk about that, yeah. Like, you're really dedicated to just working. When you're away from home. When you're away from home. And then commuting in itself is, an, is another job. And it puts a toll on the family, too. Because, like, for example, my family, if I'm coming in late, mm -hmm. uh, it may be like 2 in the morning when I finally actually make it home. Just from landing at one in the morning, having to get to the car, right? Uh, just to get home and I'm waking everybody up because the alarm's going off, so I have to reset mm. it. So it's it's them and even just making plans with them. They yeah. may see my schedule and see four days off total, but that first day after I get back, I don't want to. You do need time to recoup. You definitely do, and even going back to work that day that you're supposed to leave and go right back out, um, or when your trip starts, if it starts on Friday morning, I have to fly out Thursday. So now everything, I, I only got Thursday morning to do something. And it's true. It's, it's, personally, I would prefer to live in base in Atlanta. It's, when I was it's a totally Vegas, different Vegas, it wasn't, it wasn't all that fun because I, first of all, still find myself in Atlanta more than anything just because my yeah. family was there. Um, you have a better quality of life being based at home, yeah. I would say. Um, but then you get spoiled because once you're home, you don't want to leave. You know what I'm going to work? Because ask Tiffany how many days she's worked this month. She was supposed to work tomorrow, but ask her what she's doing tomorrow. What are you doing tomorrow, Tiffany? Why are you trying to put me on the spot? I'm, like, I'm just wondering. I'm saying. I'll I be trying. <laughs> We're going to pick up a trip together. So I worked to one see. day this month so far. And I've only worked six. My three day Five went down six. to a turn. Seriously? See, this is the problem with her. Because she's home, she can do that. <laughs> Me living outside of places hard right. for me to you see? make the change because it's like, if I got a three-day trip, and especially if it starts later in the evening, gets back early enough to where I can get home, I'm keeping it. I'm not changing at all. So, you got to But the, it's, it's bad, too, because when you're at home, you tend to make more plans now. Yeah. As of before, commuting, I never made plans because, like, I don't know what my schedule is going to look like. It's going to be all over the place. Home. I don't even know if I'm going to have time to be home. So I never made plans and no one ever seen me. Now I have time to like, you know, go to events and birthday parties and baby showers and, you know. And then the amount of money that I spend, even though I work a whole lot more than her, I spend more on hotels and stuff too, so. So we're probably making the same thing because the the day. literally I used to spend a lot of money on hotels. Food, out to eat. Food, every time I would have to commute, you're talking about in the airport or then your crash pad. So I when, yeah, when you're commuting, pad, you, you have a, you either have a, the only reason why I got a crash pad was because I did not, I was getting tired of having to like come in, land, be like, hey, okay, do you yeah, guys have a hotel? But no, see, the thing is, I'm so nice to my hotel people, Spit a big shout out to all of the people of the hotel that I stay at, and I'm not going to call them out, but in Houston, big shout out to y'all. They really look out for me. You know what? I got really comfortable and acquainted with one of the hotels in Baltimore. Baltimore. Till this day. I, I, probably, I need to find one in Baltimore. But let me tell you what happened in Houston. I came in. I combined two trips together. Uh huh. So when we combined two trips, it's like you get in early from one and you start in the next in the late day. And I had a five-hour sit. So I called the hotel and I was like, hey, can you, you know, let me get a day room? She was like, yeah, $35. Okay, I'll do that. So I get to the hotel and she was like, you know what? You stay with us enough. Don't worry. She gave me the they do do that. Like, yeah. In those five hours, let me tell you, that nap that I took, if it wasn't for that nap, that day would have been a disaster. But I was true. ready to work that day. They do work with you, work. which is because you become like family almost. Yeah. And you can call up and I'm like, hey, this is D. Oh, Mr. Johnson, what's going on? Yeah, I yeah. got your room here with your name on it. 
We're sold out, but I got, I found one, I found one for you. So, but and then you, you take them stuff. You take them, you know, fed them dinner, fed them lunch, buy them cookies, just a, a small yeah. token of appreciation. If you're ever on a flight, make sure you take your flight. It's, <laughs> so it's going to go a long way. Like I just, I flew down here to Orlando. Obviously I took the, the cruise and Krispy Kreme donuts Kreme. and they were like so happy for them. It's the small things that make the big difference. Yeah, we appreciate all of, of your, uh, can't say all, but your your uh, compliments and gestures. Some stuff. Sure. Don't give us no home cooked stuff. I though. was just about to say, if not home cook, keep it. If it's purchased and prepackaged, then talk to us. Um, but that's it. Commuting, living in base, pros and cons. Whatever you decide to do, you just have to make it work. Mm -hmm. Even if you start off at an airline and you can't get to your home, if you live, don't let in a that discourage base, you. Yes, because you'll get there eventually. And it's easy. People say, like, if you're talking to a non-commuter, they're like, oh, my God, it's so scary. Uh, no, commuting is not all what it's cracking. It really isn't. and it's it, just, it requires work. It That's makes you a lot more... Um, appreciative. Appreciative, but also knowledgeable about the industry as yeah. well. Because you get to, um, you know, make friends with other airline crews. Uh, you become acquainted. Gate agents, flight crews. Um, so you... You start to develop a friendship and a rapport with all, you know other yeah. companies. So and you see these flight attendants in passing all the time because a lot of people don't know this industry is extremely small. I see a lot of the same flight attendants over and over. I'm like, man, I know this company. You know, it's, first of all, our company has what fifteen thousand flight attendants. Yeah. The old company has now four thousand. So you have all these people that are flying, but I see the same faces over and over again, and we're all just a big family. So. Yeah. Don't let it discourage you. Get out there, apply. Many airlines are hiring right now. JetBlue just recently opened up their application. Delta's hiring. Delta's hiring. Uh, American, they're still hiring. Mm -hmm. Spirit, Frontier, so whatever you do, get out there, apply. Go ahead and join us in the friendly skies. Next month, though, we're going to be talking, you know, it's Valentine's month, February. Uh, so we're going to be talking about love, dating of a flight attendant. And yeah. the pros and cons about that. The speed take <laughs> Sure. See you guys next month. Make sure you subscribe, share, tell everybody, like, right? Comment, week. question. Comment, confirm. Oh. I just know that we love you. Yeah, we do, but that was so dramatic. Anywho, that's it, y'all. Good night. Bye.